In this video, we're going to do two things. We're going to motivate the definition of the derivative. I'm also going to prove the alternate derivative formula. So, as always, let's get right into it. First, I want to show you what a derivative is. Suppose f of x is equal to x squared. And I'm going to tell you that the derivative of that function is 2x. And it happens to be denoted by f prime of x. That's how you read it. f prime of x or the derivative of x equals 2x. So here is the x and y axis. And here is the curve. Y is equal to x squared, or f of x equals x squared. The derivative formula gives you the slope of at any point on the curve. For example, when x is 1, the slope of this tangent line m for slope is the derivative at 1, which is 2 times 1 or 2. The slope when x is equal to 3, the slope of that tangent line right there, it is nothing more than the derivative at 3. And the derivative says, hey, whatever x is, double it. At least for this function, it says that. When x is negative 2, that's the tangent line. And the slope is going to be the derivative at negative 2. Just double the x value, you get negative 4. Now, this seems reasonable. This slope is 2. This slope is or clearly steeper. And yeah, yeah, it was bigger. And this slope, yeah, it's negative. And you know what? OK, it's negative. Now, what about the slope of the tangent line at 0? That's just going to be a horizontal line. Let's see if that works out. So m should be the derivative at 0. Well, 2 times 0, you're not going to believe it. It's 0. The deriv So it worked. The derivative formula gives you the slope of the tangent line at any point. Okay. So now that we know what a derivative is, let's see if we could derive or come up with the formula. Now, we're going to start off with a function. And I don't know, maybe that's the function. It's f of x. There's the y-axis. And I want to know the slope of the tangent line right there. So now, I just want to approximate it. So I'll pick this x value. And I'll pick another x value a little distance away. In fact, it's going to be delta x units away. And if this was 3 and I told you this was 5, you would say, oh, whatever 3 plus 5 is, that's what goes there. So I'm telling you that this distance is delta x. So that must be x plus delta x. Now, you go straight above it x, straight across, you're going to get f of x. And if you go straight up at f of x, sorry, at x plus delta x, and then go straight across, you're going to find out, you're going to see, what you're going to see here is whatever f of x plus delta x is. Now, I'm going to connect these two points. And then I can make a right triangle. And let us find the slope of that secant line. Well, the slope of any line is the change in x, sorry, the change in y over the change in x. This change in y is the same as that distance. That is, it's f of x plus delta x minus f of x over 
Well, I've already said that the change that this is the change in X over the change in X. That is, it didn't change. Okay. Now, again, we want the slope of that line. And I would hope that you would say that the slope of this line is not a very good approximation. So how can we make it better? Well, how about we make delta x a little bit smaller? So to the best of my ability, I'm going to try and draw the same exact graph. And here's x. And instead of delta, delta x being this long, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. I'm going to call that x plus delta x. So straight above here and across, that's going to be f of x right here. And straight up and across right here, that's going to be f of x plus delta x y-axis, x-axis. Now, if I were to connect these two points via a straight line, it would be like that. And like before, I can make a right triangle. Now, what is the slope of that secant line? That secant line. The slope of this secant line, like any secant line, it's the change in y over the change in x. But what is the change in f or the change in y? Well, that's the change in y, which is exactly this. It's the top minus the bottom. For example, if this were 9 and this was 3, and I ask you, well, how long is that? You would compute the top minus the bottom and tell me that's the answer. So... It's the top y value minus the lower y value all over. We won't change delta x. Okay, now if I were to ask you, so we want the slope of this line. If I were to ask you, is this a better approximation? Hopefully you would say yes. I can't force you to say anything, but hopefully you'd say yes. So let's do this at least one more time. So we have, oops, we have this graph. It goes like that. Here is x, and now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make delta x only be that big not big at all so here's f for here's x f for of x that's the height of f for of x and right here and across that's the height of f for of x plus delta x and we can make our right triangle there it is the slope of that secant line is the change in y over the change in x. The change in y is this distance, which is the same as this distance, which is the same as it was the other two times I asked, all over delta x. Now, if I were now to ask you, I can draw the line longer. If I were to ask you now, if that line is close to the tangent line, you, you would say, yeah, it's the closest it's been so far. In fact, if we take this difference quotient, just a fancy name for this, and we take the limit as delta x goes to zero, we keep pushing the point closer. In other words, initially, we had this point. Well, let's use a different color. We had this point and that point. And then we have, we always have this point. We have this point and that point. Then we had 
this point and this point and then later on we'll have the same one and that one and we keep pushing this point closer and closer to x which means you remember this was x plus delta x say delta x1 just to denote that the delta x's are not the same x plus delta x1 and then this x was x plus delta x2 and this x right here was x plus delta x3 and this x right here is x plus delta x4 if you notice the delta x's are getting smaller and smaller and smaller they're getting closer to x that is delta x is getting closer to to zero now whenever you have this limit well okay you have this limit and we define that limit to be f prime of x that is the definition of derivatives three horizontal lines mean definition that is this has no meaning at all to you until I tell you that symbol by definition is this limit that is the definition of the derivative okay so let's see what we have we have that f prime of x and now we're going to derive the alternate derivative formula f prime of x is the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x well if i replace x with c that shouldn't change anything remember delta x and x are not the same so delta x goes to zero of f of c plus delta x minus f of c okay so now I want to call that x. I'm going to say x is equal to c plus delta x. So what I can say at that point is f prime of c is equal to the limit of f of o. This is over delta x, of course. Ah, so is this one. Okay, so it's f of x plus I am just defining this to be x and f for c just stays f for c. Okay. f for c. All over. Now, if I solve this equation, that's my substitution, if I solve that for delta x, delta x will become x minus c. Now, if delta x goes to zero, that implies whatever delta x equals, namely x minus c, goes to zero. But if x minus c is going to zero, that implies that x is going to c. So whenever delta x goes to zero, x goes to c. In fact, the implication goes the other way. That is, if x goes to c, that means x minus c goes to 0. And since x minus c is delta x, then instead of x minus c going to 0, delta x goes to 0. That is, these two statements, based on this substitution here, these two statements are exactly the same. Well, instead of saying delta x goes to 0, I want to say x goes to c. And one last thing. Instead, and remember, this substitution gave rise to delta x equaling x minus d. So instead of delta x, I'm going to put x minus c. There, this is the alternate derivative formula. Now, this does not give you the derivative function. In other words, f for x equaling x squared, that implies, we didn't prove it yet, 
but that means f prime of x is equal to 2x. That's not an x. That's some value. Okay? It will tell you. This, form, this formula here will tell you that f prime of c equals 2c. So if you plug in 3, it's 2 times 3. More, what I meant to say is, if you plugged in 11, it will tell you 22. That is, if you plugged in 11 here, and here, and here, and here, and I must admit 11 was the worst number for me to pick, but if you plugged in 11 in these three places, this limit, if f of x were x squared, this limit will turn out to be 22. That is, it gives you the limit, sorry, it gives you the slope of the tangent line for the value of c that you plug in. We, do, we motivated the definition of the, de, of the derivative formula, and we derived the alternate derivative formula the formula that gives you the derivative at a point. In the next video, we'll work on some derivative rules or derivative, finding the derivative of functions. But for now, this video is done.